Cruising along without a care in the world, at one with the landscape. Wouldn't be quite so good if the engine was belching black smoke, though. None of us want engines to pollute, which is why today's manufacturers have built their diesel engines to be cleaner and more efficient. And when vehicle technology changes, if it affects the MOT test, Vehicle Inspectorate, VI, must ensure that it too moves on to keep pace with changing technology. for VI. Yeah, I'm not having much luck, I'm afraid. Nice to be out in the fresh air, though, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be great if it was like this everywhere, wouldn't it? Now, isn't that why the emissions tests for diesels are changing? Well, as you probably know, the British government and European Parliament are both committed to reducing vehicle emissions. Now, with the research and experience that's been gained and the improved efficiency of diesel engines themselves, changes to the smoke test can be introduced. Standards have been harmonised throughout the different countries. And this will enable lower emissions to be achieved across the European Union. So what exactly are the changes? I think we should go and do a test, don't you? Good idea. I'll just get me... Now, we need to ask a couple of questions of the presenter at the time they're at reception, um, such things as has the cam belt been changed recently, is the vehicle regularly serviced, do they have any concerns about the engine that might cause problems in developing damage uh, during the emissions test. There should be information on the notice board and these leaflets available which give a general breakdown of what happens during the emissions test. And uh, if you did decide not to carry out the test because of what the presenter had told you, what would you need to do? In that case, you would issue a VT30, a notification of refusal to issue an MOT test certificate. And you would need to state clearly on there the reasons why you're refusing to conduct that part of the test. The best time to test a vehicle is when it's warmed up. So you would ask the presenter, have they driven fire? Is the engine properly warmed up? Uh, it isn't satisfactory to warm the engine up stationary from cold by revving it. And as we've just arrived with a warm engine, we best get on with our test. Excellent, let's do it. Tom, are we going to do a complete test on this diesel? We certainly are, Robert. And uh, I'll take you through a few points that we need to consider as we do the testing. But the first consideration is where exactly we're going to conduct this test. And it needs to be in an environment where there's space or we're using good extraction. So we've got this one outside, yeah. Um, we also need to consider the amount of noise because there's a considerable amount of revving from the diesel engine. Um, so we need to consider other people. Maybe there's neighbours, you know, residential houses nearby. You can actually close the bonnet of a vehicle and that reduces the amount of noise considerably. Now we're going to be using a, a smoke meter. Do you use a, a smoke meter on all vehicles? No, you don't. The smoke meter is used on vehicles that are first used on or after the 1st of August 1979. So what do we have to do with vehicles uh, used before that date? For the earlier vehicles, um, we will carry out visual checks and we need to go through a process. And one of the most important features is to consider the temperature of the oil of the, of the engine. Now, the engine oil temperature must not be below 60 degrees C. Normal running temperature of an engine, the oil will be around 80 degrees C. And we can assess this with a probe. And ideally, if it's around 80 or just above, that's what we try to achieve. But some vehicles, you can't always use the probe. And where you can't use the probe, you would consider the temperature gauge of the vehicle. But if you haven't got a temperature gauge, then you can consider the cooling fan cutting in, and that will tell you that the engine's warmed up. So, Tom, once you're happy that the oil is at the correct operating temperature, what's the procedure for this visual test? Right, the procedure is that, first of all, we'll purge the exhaust system. So we would run the engine at 2,500 RPM, or half the maximum speed of the engine, whichever is the lower. And that will be for a 20 second period. When that's completed, we will allow the engine to idle. And then we will walk around and assess the smoke that's emitted from the exhaust for a period of five seconds. The vehicle will fail if it emits dense blue or clearly visible black smoke. 
It's also handy to have an assistant when you conduct this because you will be using the assistant throughout the test anyway. We then need to do what's called a rapid acceleration test where the engine will be accelerated, and this is where the assistant can come in particularly. The engine will be accelerated to about 2,500 RPM uh, and, or half maximum speed, and during that acceleration, you will assess the smoke that comes out of the exhaust. And it can fail both after the idle and after that rapid acceleration. Yes, it can, it? yeah. But the difference is, um, if, on the idle, it's dense blue or clearly visible black smoke. It can be seen for a period of five seconds. During the acceleration, it's dense blue or clearly visible black smoke that would obscure the view of other road users. So that's a considerable amount of smoke. So that's the test complete, uh, but there are some older vehicles that are designed to make smoke, aren't there? Well, yes, vehicles certainly pre-1960, you can get unavoidable levels of smoke, and these need to be considered. It, it won't necessarily be a failure. Tom, what about vehicles first used on or after the 1st of August 1979? What's the score there? For those vehicles, they will be subject to a smoke meter test. Now, all the relevant questions will have been asked at reception, history of the engine, etc., servicing. Uh, we need to consider the environment again. Uh, is it a well-ventilated area? The noise of revving the engine, will it affect other people? And then we need to use a smoke meter. Um, I have an example here. There are many different types. First thing to consider is they must be an accepted smoke meter by the vehicle inspectorate. And they must be maintained and calibrated within the guidelines as set out in the MOT inspection manual. OK, how do you do the test? Firstly, we're going to check that there's enough oil in the engine. So we would uh, dip the oil. Like so, that's satisfactory. Replace the dipstick. We need to consider if we can look at the cam belt, the condition of the cam belt. On this particular engine, we can, um, because the cam belt cover is not bolted on, it's simply clipped on. And where it's clipped, we can unclip and examine. Just remove the clip, pull the cover back, and examine the condition of the belt, the tension, whether it's oil contaminated. Why is that important? Well, this being a diesel engine, um, we will be revving the engine up to maximum, possibly several times. And there is a danger that you could do damage to the engine if components were in poor condition. On this particular vehicle, this is very rare, but you can actually unclip this cover. Uh, normally, they're bolted on, and as with items that are bolted on, you're not allowed to dismantle. In other words, you're not allowed to use spanners or screwdrivers. Normally, you wouldn't be able to see the cam belt. On that type of engine, you would look around the crankshaft pulleys, around that particular part of the engine, to see if there was evidence of heavy oil contamination, where you might have a concern about the belt. Because if you were concerned about the condition, it would be most likely you would refuse to carry out this particular function of the test. And what other things do you need to check? You need to check the condition of the governor seals, whether they've been tampered with or not. As well as that, you're also going to carry out a process once the engine's been purged and you're satisfied it's up to temperature, whereby you would check the maximum RPM, so you would accelerate the engine slowly to its maximum speed to prove that the governor is working. And what about oil leaks and things like that? Well, you would generally look around the engine, you know, for signs and evidence of oil leaks, and you would also consider the sound of the engine during these slow accelerations to see if there was anything, or to listen for if there was anything about the engine that caused, was a cause for concern. And you'd expect the oil level to be OK, because if the oil warning light was on, you wouldn't even start the test, would you? No, in that case, you wouldn't test the vehicle at all. Now, Tom, you'd normally do this uh, smoke test on your own, but today you've got an assistant. Why is that? Uh, it's more practical to use an assistant when you're actually filming and demonstrating. OK, take us through it. OK. Right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the oil temperature. This particular equipment that we're using has a built-in probe to measure the temperature. Not every smoke meter equipment has a built-in probe. Some have a freestanding probe. So we'll remove the dipstick. 
and we need to make sure that the probe when we insert it is not longer than the dipstick. So we adjust them accordingly and then insert the probe into the dipstick tube. At this point, I'll ask my assistant to start the engine. Paul, if you can make sure it's out of gear and the handbrake is on, and then start the engine, please. Now the machine is going to measure the oil temperature. So if you could raise up to about 2,500 RPM. Fine, thank you. Now you can see we brought the temperature up to in excess of ATC. So you're happy now that the engine is at the correct temperature. What next? First of all, we're going to purge the, the exhaust system. So we'll be running the engine at 2,500 RPM or half the maximum speed, whichever is the lower. On a vehicle like this, it'll be 2,500 RPM for the period of 20 seconds. When the 20 seconds is up, um, Paul will then take the engine speed right up to maximum to prove that the governor is functioning. And you'll hear a, a slight change in the sound of the engine as the governor comes in and steady. Paul, if you could take it up to 2,500 revs, please. OK, up to maximum. Now we, you could hear the sound as the governor came in. And now what we need to do is insert the probe into the exhaust so we can measure the smoke. OK. Now, Robert, with the engine switched off, we're going to insert the, the meter probe into the exhaust, making sure that it, it's set up so that there's a good flow of gas through the meter. Now, what about if you were doing this inside, Tom? OK, if we, we would be using extraction equipment, it's important to make sure the extraction hood is not closer than 200 millimetres to the exhaust pipe. What we need to do now is go to the front of the vehicle to continue the sequence of the test. OK. We will start the engine and then we will take it up and through the sequences of revs and the machine prompts us to do that. Um, I'll signal to Paul when I need him to rev the engine up to maximum. OK. OK, Paul, if you can make sure it's out of gear, the handbrake's on and start the engine. And once I operate the start button, it goes into the sequence and dictates to me when it needs to be accelerated. OK, switch the engine off, please, Paul. Right, now we've completed that part of the sequence. If you wait here, I'll just go and remove the probe from the exhaust pipe so that it's in free air. The meter prompt means it requires no more accelerations. And now we simply press the check button. And the machine will assess whether it's passed or failed and it's passed the metered smoke check. So does that mean that the vehicle has definitely passed the test? Not necessarily. If during the accelerations, smoke of any colour was emitted from the exhaust uh, and that smoke was so excessive that it would obscure the view of other road users, then it would fail on that count. All that remains for us to do now is, is remove the oil temperature probe and then we'll go and get a printout of the results. Tom, when you do this test, it's important how you press the accelerator, isn't it? Yes, it is, uh, and I'll show you. But more importantly, I want you to listen. This is too slow. This is too fast. This is just right.
So that's moving the throttle pedal from idle to full fuel in not more than one second. I'll repeat that so you can hear it again. Now, Tom, this vehicle has passed. If it had failed, what would have been the criteria? This vehicle has passed on the accepted minimum of three accelerations. If after a maximum of six accelerations on a non-turboed engine, if it exceeds 2.5 metres to the minus one, it fails. On the turboed engine, we allow a higher figure because of turbo lag. And that if it exceeds three metres to the minus one, it fails. Now, these uh, smoke meters are obviously important. Do they need to be checked? Yes, they do. They need to be calibrated at least once a year by a recognized agent. And they also need to have a calibration once every seven days by the testing station. And the meter prompts you to do that. Now, Tom, I believe there may be some changes coming along soon. What can you tell us about them? Yes, we're currently working with the, the test and trade to develop more reliable ways uh, of testing procedures. We're also investigating better ways to test the new generation of cleaner diesels. And how will test stations find out about these changes? Well, this information will come out in the usual way. There'll be changes to the testers manual and uh, these will be accompanied with special notices. And also there'll be information in the popular Matters of Testing magazine. Now, will meters have to be updated to cope with these changes? Some meters will have to have changes to their internal programs. This will be to prompt the testers to press the accelerator in under one second. But we have asked manufacturers not to go ahead with these changes until we've finalized the procedures for testing cleaner diesels. And then all machines will have to be updated with the new processes. And what about computerization? Any changes for smoke meters there? Specifications are being written for the next generation of smoke meters, and these will include all the changes for communication and the requirements of the new MOT scheme. But this equipment is not yet available to buy. So no need to replace existing equipment at the moment? No, absolutely no need at this moment. So, Tom, uh, they're the diesel do's and diesel don'ts. They certainly are, Robert. And now I can tidy this up and get back to what I was doing. Do you mind if I join you? Please do. Thank you.